So here we are today, you'll notice <laughs> something on the channel we haven't had on here in a long time. This is Fluffy, my side-by-side. -side. Um, Fluffy has not gotten a lot of love in the last couple of years. Uh, when I first got it, we four-wheeled a whole lot and um, did a whole lot with it. And then uh, we got into moving from house to house and building this house and haven't really got to go four-wheeling uh, really much anymore. Fluffy got turned into a, a workhorse. Um, it's hauled brick, rocks, dirt, uh, drug everything under the sun. I use it a whole lot in uh, my little logging that I do for my wood shop. Um, <clears throat> it's a hell of a workhorse for dragging logs out of the woods, pulling trees down, or anything I want to go do, really. Uh, it's it's done everything I've ever asked it to do, uh, except I have I've mistreated it. I'm not going to lie. I've not given it the love that it uh, deserved throughout the years. Um, but now we got the, got the war machine off the lift and uh, we got to do some maintenance. It's got something going on. Uh, I'm not sure if it's in the clutch or, or what exactly it is right now. Uh, essentially, when you give it a little gas instead of the clutch slowly coming in and engaging like it should, the, the RPM start to come up and then it just kind of engages all at once, almost like a lockup clutch would do. Um, so got to investigate, figure out what that is, figure out what I need to order to fix it and, uh, and fix that. But while it's down, I'm going to give it the love that it has been needing for quite some time. We got to change oil. We got to replace some studs and some of the, some of these spacers. Um, got to put a new winch on the front. The one that's on it just broke and fell apart a long time ago. And I've just never bothered to fix it. Uh, we got to take the exhaust off of it. Probably got to weld up a few spots on that. Got to put some new, uh, some new header wrap on it. Um, and Lord only knows what else we're going to find once we get into it. Uh, essentially, whatever I find wrong with it, it's going to get fixed and I'll buy OEM parts for it. Or if there's an aftermarket equivalent or that's better, we'll buy that. Um, like I said, it's been a workhorse for several years now. And uh, so it's time to show it a little love and uh, get it back to 100%. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start. Uh, I'll walk you around, kind of show you, you know, some of the things that I have definitely been neglecting. Um, some of the things we're going to fix. Um, we'll walk around and look at that and then we'll start by, uh, I'll take the bed off of it and just set it off to the side just because it gives me a lot more room to work and on top of the motor if I want to and a lot more light for when I'm working on the clutch and stuff. I'm not going to remove the cage because I don't feel like dealing with that. Um, so we can get right in through here once I take the wheel off of it. We can get in through there and get good access to it. Um, so let me show you what all she's looking like under here. All right, so believe it or not, Fluffy's only got about 380 miles on her. <laughs> but she's led a very hard life. So you can see the exhaust shield right here. It's been all to hell. I think I got a tree limb caught up in there one day and it just kind of just kind of bent all that up in there. Now there's a panel that goes right here. I took it off when I was just kind of spraying it off, trying to get some of the mud and dirt off of it. Uh, you can see the exhaust. Uh, doesn't look swell. Definitely seen some better days all the way in through there. Then you can see the header wrap is hanging down and all this is loose. And I don't know if it needs new stuff or not. We're going to take it off and take a look at that. May actually do a little work with this part of the frame back here. It's kind of ripped up and damaged as you can see where I yank on big old hickory logs and stuff like that all the time. So. That's due for some, uh, for a little love. I'd like to see if I can tighten up the parking brake a little bit too. I don't know if you can do that or not, if it has any adjustment, but uh, I'm gonna see if I can do that because mine doesn't hold very well. I mean, it kind of holds, but well, not very well. So then we're moving on to the front right here. Um, not a whole lot wrong up here. I've got to definitely do some alignment because I bent a tie rod in at one point in time and had to slap it on the woods and I've never really gotten back around to aligning it properly. There's the old school winch right there. That originally was a KFI Black Series winch. Used it one time and it broke and uh, you know failed miserably when I really needed it. And uh, you see I tried taking it apart one day, see if I could put a new motor on it. That shit didn't work, so we're gonna throw that dude away and probably go to like Harbor Freight and buy one of their winches there because I've got one on my trailer and I know some other guys that have had them and have had a lot of good luck with the Harbor Freight winches, so I'm gonna go with that. 
Now, because I never got around to either making me some new control arms that would make this thing plus one or two inches forward, my 30s kind of ate into my wheel wells right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make out of some sheet metal. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna kind of reshape this floor right here and cut that part out right there because it throws mud through the hole <laughs> and uh, it will cover you up. And it's kind of, I don't like it when my kids are riding in there. You see this tire just chopping in through here. Obviously that's not a cool feeling either. So we're gonna cut and make some sheet metal to go right there to cover that up. Um, then basically we're just gonna give the whole thing a good once over and uh, like I said, fix anything I can find wrong. So uh, let's get rolling. So right here, coming up next, I'm gonna work on trying to get this shock off that holds this bed up right here. And that's got a little clip up in there. It's kind of a pain in the butt. You gotta get it pulled off without losing a little bastard. And then we'll pop the two pins out of the back back here so we can uh, lift this dude off. So right about here, you see me, um, working across through here, trying to get the wiring harness off the bottom of this bed. Um, I couldn't really find, I knew it had a plug somewhere, like a master plug, but I couldn't really find it. So I just took the stupid thing off just so I could keep it moving. All right, so we got the bed all off now. I gotta remove this heat shield and get this bent up heat shield right here off because we gotta straighten that. Um, I'm gonna go on and take this little cross member off. Uh, everything really is to, you know, I gotta get the exhaust off this thing, which, you know, get easier access to get all this crap off of it. Um, then uh, we gotta get the clutch cover and stuff off down there so I can try to see what in the world is going on there. So let's get cracking getting this stuff off. truth so it's already probably definitely not a good sign that uh, whenever I took the main breather tube off of it chunks of uh, the belt fell out of there um, now I do have aftermarket belt on there it's like a I don't know it says like carbon fiber something like that I don't know it was really expensive so um, 
little nervous about what I'm gonna find when I pop this off. So, let's see. Hey, lots of chunks. And something hit the ground down by my foot. I'm not sure what that was. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that's probably not good. Oh yeah, that belt is pretty chewed up. I don't really know why, something is obviously hitting it. Oh shit, yeah. I guess, yeah, what fell was a bolt that I had obviously dropped in there. Okay, so yeah, let's see. Chunk's about there. Um, get the camera here in just a second, show you what it looks like. So, right now, this is our current situation. Not much that you can see down in there. Oh yeah, you can see right there. You see that belt, all this is chewed way up. I'm not really sure the how or why just yet. We're gonna clearly have to delve a little bit deeper into this to see what's really going on here. So uh, let's get this belt off of here and we'll see where we go from there. So I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this thing and I kind of got to spinning it around. I realized that not only is this top section off of the belt missing a huge area, as I spin this thing around, it hits a spot where it turns almost free and I'm missing a huge chunk of belt right here, like ripped all the way off the side of it. So I think that's actually gonna be what was causing my clutch to act the way that it was. Uh, I think that where it was missing this huge chunk, it had to rev the motor enough to close that to close that sheave up to hit the belt to to get it to kind of drive down on it here. So I'm hoping that that is the cause of uh, my problems there, and I don't actually need a clutch now. I still don't understand what got in here uh, that would have torn the belt up. I felt all around this thing. I can't find anything anywhere. I can't find anything loose. Nothing sticking out that it would have hit. So I really don't know what would have damaged it, but uh, it's destroyed this belt. Now, I will say this, when you pull this, this, clutch, this clutch cover off, it has four bolts. You have two short ones and two long ones. Make sure you pay attention to where the two long ones come out versus the two short ones so you can put them back where they go. Now, to get the belt off, you're actually going to screw, get the two longer ones. You're gonna screw them into these two open holes on the front half of your assembly here. Now what, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna screw these in. You can use an impact if you want. I'm not going to, I kinda like to kinda feel it a little bit, a little bit better than that. Now as you screw these in, it's gonna actually open up the distance between this two, these two sheaves right here and let the, let the belt come loose enough so, you, so that you can take it off. So let's knock that out. Look at that. See how much it's missing right there? It's missing a good quarter of an inch of belt all the way around. Now, obviously that sheep wouldn't be able to clamp down good on that. And on the inside of it, it's all chewed up. And then look here, missing a good chunk on the inside right here. I don't know what in the world is going on inside this thing. I don't feel anything, no burrs or anything that's, that's broken or would have grabbed a hold of this thing. I, now, I do know that I thought I had messed the clutch up because I was dragging a big old cherry stump one day with this thing and every time it would flip over, it would dig into the ground. And I was, I really should have probably, you know, probably should have tried something else, but I was pretty determined that day to get it done. So I just really overworked the hell out of Fluffy while I was doing it. Uh, but 
whatever, I got it done. Um, got it pulled, but it looks like it cost me a belt in the process. So um, I'm gonna get a new uh, get a new belt ordered, to, and uh, we'll come back when it's time to throw that bad boy on. All right, so we're back now. It's been about two weeks, and I've been looking around, trying everywhere to find a belt comparable to the one that I had on it. The one that I had on it was a really expensive carbon fiber belt. Um, was not able to find one of those anywhere that I could get in a reasonable amount of time. I looked on Super ATV site. Uh, they've got their extra super pimp daddy uh, belt that they offer. I ordered it and when I put it in and paid for it and everything, I got an email saying that uh, my item would ship on December 20th. So, I mean, that's cool and all, but uh, I'm really needing to get my ride back before December 20th. So, what I did was I actually had my stock belt sitting in a box. So I dug this guy up. Um, it's pretty easy to change the belt, so I figure I'm just gonna throw this stock one on and it will get me by until the new one comes in. So, put stock one on, we basically just do the exact opposite of uh, you know what we did to get the, uh, the really cool custom one off. So, let's get this dude back on here so we can get on the next thing. All right, so, the other belt was definitely stretched and uh, you know obviously destroyed somewhat. So we're gonna open this clutch up a little bit more here to give us a little bit more room to slide that belt down in there a little bit deeper. Oh yeah. Now nah, we're cooking with sizzling. It again, so we just use this 10 millimeter, use those 10 millimeter bolts right there. Now, let's see if she'll go. I still think it should go on this side first, but there is no way that's gonna work. I'm not sure if that's the uh, textbook way to do this, but uh, <laughs> it's on there. <laughs> Nonetheless, so now I'm just gonna unzip these 10 millimeters that are on here. Let the clutch close back up. And all will be well. See, now it's already starting to grab on that belt, so. So now we'll go ahead and uh, put the cover and everything back on it and start buttoning this part up and get ready to get our, uh, fix up our exhaust and see about uh, getting that put back on so we get the bed back on and move on to the front. pretty uneventful it all kind of went on just like it's supposed to we put the a little bird cage over top of the clutch assembly there and uh, 
put our cover back on. You see, I use the uh, the three ugga dugga method for tightening. Um, so next, we just got to put on our breather assembly here, uh, breather tube pipe, whatever you want to call it. Uh, put that guy on. Um, then we'll be ready to start uh, putting. Uh, I got to put this, the covers back on either side. Then we'll let it down and start taking a look at our exhaust and see what we got to do to get that all put back together. Okay, so moving on to the exhaust. Um, for those of you who don't, that are not super familiar with the fluffy build, uh, I took the factory exhaust off. I cut it up because it sounded like crap and it was really quiet. Um, it was really kind of big and ugly. And uh, I found these little uh, small uh, Flowmasters on eBay and I bought two of them and I mounted one right off the engine. Then I cut some of the factory pipe up and uh, used it and then loop around the other side I'm out on another one on the outside of the frame there I did wrap it up with some header wrap and uh, it's all worked pretty good I mean you know I had to modify it all heavily of course so it would work but it's all worked pretty good for the most part most part every now and then um, I'll have a weld break or something somewhere because this stuff is really thin um, and it looks like apparently my uh, my clamp came off where my header wrap was right here so I'm either going to rewrap this whole thing. Yeah, I'm gonna have to because I'm missing some. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rewrap the whole exhaust. So while I've got it unwrapped, I'm gonna go ahead and um, whew, check it, see if it needs anything to be re-welded. As you can see, I've got an O2 bone mounted in mine because I run a, uh, a Power Commander uh, with the uh, uh, external uh, ignition programmer so uh, it came with an O2 bung to help us with tuning so I could have my guy when he tuned it so he could get it right so um, we'll unwrap this we'll check it out see how all the welds look everywhere if all the welds look good then we'll wrap it back up and we'll bolt her back on <coughs> this stuff could smell better hope I've got some yeah so as you can see I've got like a little thin triangle piece of shape piece of metal welded in right here to kind of take some of the stress off of this bend where it comes out and it is the pipe is ripped right there it's just that one spot right there so I'll have to grind that down and we'll re-weld that um, other than that everything else looks okay though I don't see any other any other rips or anything so we'll grind this little spot down right here and We'll weld that up. Yeah, it's cleaning up nicely, actually. And the inside of this Flowmaster, I bought this thing new in 14. It's been on there ever since, and it has seen a lot of hot and cold it's completely shredded inside. Both of them are. I don't really care. I mean, it sounds okay. I mean, let's be real. That single cylinder is not exactly anything that we're all looking at. Just uh, pining over for the sound of it. Anyway, it's not a it's not a cammed up 350 Chevrolet. So, I mean, it sounds like whatever it sounds like. I'm okay with it. Um, I just need the pipe to not break off of it. So, we just go freshen this here, weld up, and uh, keep it moving. Put my blanket over my table here. We'll get to welding. Now, this stuff is tough to weld being so thin, so I'm just gonna just sting it and just kind of work work my puddle around it. You can't just grab it and run a bead like this. I mean. Even if I had a TIG, it would be very tough to do being so thin. So we're just going to keep stinging it and 
Move it on through, get this dude welded. Okay, so header wrap time. So I got my header wrap here. I think I bought this off of Amazon or eBay. I'm not really sure, it's black. It looks cool. It does not hold its color over time. You get it hot enough times, it all turns white. I've had blue stuff too, it turned white. Um, so on this one, I always start wrapping it right here because it's kind of a weird way that you have to wrap it, go around everything. And I'll finish it right here and then I'll take and I'll put me a clamp, which I had, here it is. put me a clamp right here to hold it on. Now, I've heard that um, the easiest way to wrap this stuff is just soak it in hot water and get it really wet, but I don't feel like getting water all over my workbench or getting myself soaking wet. And I don't know, I've had decent luck wrapping this stuff pretty tight. Uh, it wouldn't have come off this last time except for the, the hose clamp that I had on it just fell apart for whatever reason. Still holding up just fine on the other end of the muffler, so. We're gonna wrap it with this right here. If I have enough, hopefully I do. It's not wrapped as good as I had hoped, but we'll see how it holds up. If it gets a little loose down the road, I'll, uh, I'll pull it back off and try to rewrap it. Um, the only reason why I wrap it is because right, right here where it comes out of the pipe and then right here, the exhaust is still pretty hot. So I'm sure it probably does get red hot at some point in time. So hopefully it does help to keep some of the heat off the bottom of the bed. And I don't know, keeping things from catching fire. I guess I had a buddy of mine's razor burn up recently because he had a header on his and some dry uh, grass and straw and stuff got packed up in there and caught on fire and burnt that thing to the ground. So I've always wrapped this up with a uh, header wrap. So I guess I'll just keep doing that. So that's got that. So let's get over here and uh, get this reinstalled. All right, so as you've no doubt figured out, Fluffy's exhaust is quite a bit different than other uh, Yamaha Vikings exhaust. Now I've got this heat shield that I made a long time ago for this thing. It's actually come in pretty handy. You can see where it gets pretty hot right across there. And uh, hopefully it does help to keep some of the heat off that differential. I can't see where it would hurt anything. So it does still bolt on to the factory studs here, just like anything else, but it does have this bracket that comes up here, ties into the side of the, the motor there. Uh, that wasn't originally on there. I had to add it after the fact because these motors jump around in here so much that it was just putting too much stress and it was wanting to break my pipe because it was just moving around so much in there. So added this up here, give her a little strength here. So let's we'll stick our little gasket up in here. Start to slide her up in place. It bolts on for the most part like a factory exhaust would. You just kind of slide it up into place and, and then Bob's your uncle. Yeah, there it goes. So we got that. So we'll jump up here, start this guy. Now this is just a bolt that I had left over from another project around the shop. I don't even know what it would have been. There's no telling really. And I've got a, just a lock nut that I throw on it. Guess I could have drilled that hole just a shade bigger in that bracket so it would have slid, slid through here a little nicer, huh? So what I like to do anytime, you know, you got something with multiple nuts and bolts and stuff that hold it all together is 
I'll go ahead and get my nuts started on here. Then we'll move down to the bottom and get those two started. I always wondered why they didn't put lock nuts on these. I will say it is a much easier job to uh, work on this thing with this bed off. We got those two on there. So now let's snug it all up. Now these exhaust manifold bolts, I like to kind of snug them up together. That way it tightens down evenly on the gasket. I guess it would really matter a whole lot if it, if it w weren't evenly, but just got used to doing it when I built car engines and I'll do it on this one too. And there again, these things aren't huge so they don't have to be super mega tight, just good and tight so they don't come back off. All right. I'm gonna snug this guy out. The battery did. Yep. Remember back on the top right here. Make sure and put that little little piece of that breather through there, or, or duct, whatever you want to call it. A little wire loom here. Put those in, zip that down. All right, so we got these springs that go down in here. They're nothing very special, really, they just I usually just, I used to have spring pullers, but I don't need more because I don't work on a lot of this stuff anymore like I used to. So I'll just try to make these channels work. They're not too hard. Looks like this guy is not wanting to fit together as good as it used to. Not at all. That's not gonna seal up. <laughs> Shoot. Why is that like that? Okay, that's why, because it's not bolted in right there. So let's go on and make that make that happening, as Tony Beats would say. Oh yeah, look at that, pull right together. So 12. Dunzo. I put my bottom spring on. shield back up on the top up here. Let's hook this guy back in where he goes. Whenever the new belt comes in for this thing, I've definitely got to change the oil too. I don't even know. Really, if I've ever changed the oil, <laughs> I'm fluffy, to be honest with you, as sad as that may sound. <laughs> Plug in my O2 sensor. I guess I had that zip tied up. I'll be 
be needing to freshen up my zip tie. Yeah, that'd be alright right there, I think. Well, no. I don't remember what I had a zip tie to, to be honest with you. I guess I could pull these out, probably zip tie underneath it. So uh, next up is to run it up and I've got to pull my adapter off so I can replace a stud. Actually first I got to go check my spare adapters and see if I've got a stud that I can use in one of those. You know what, before we get too far, let's put this heat shield back on. And I'm probably going to have to do a little bendy bendy on it because it's supposed to actually be more up this way. Apparently I have uh, hung it on something somewhere along the line. and. Kind of bend it up a little bit. Let's see if we can just grab it some bitch and bend it. <clears throat> yeah, that's not the end of the world. Yeah, I can probably live with that. Still kind of bent a little bit. Grab me a hammer, see if I can coerce it a little bit. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure if that thing's supposed to stick out some or not, or if it's supposed to be up some or not. I guess whenever I put this panel on right here, we'll see where these where these line up to see how I need to bend it to get it back to where its true shape is. I kind of feel like it should be up some. Let me get something pried up here. I really think. Okay, now, now we'll go up and uh, see about getting that taken care of. All right, so you might be saying to yourself, why, oh, why, oh, why does Ben have these big old adapters on old Fluffy? Well, because when I first bought Fluffy, these things were brand new. There was, I mean, there were like none of them out. Um, and um, I wanted some wheels and tires for my ride. And the dealership that I was that um, I bought it from at the time, my buddy ran the parts department. And they had these really dope 16 inch wheels with 30 inch tires on them. And I really wanted them. They, uh, he couldn't get the wheels and the lug pattern that would, that would fit Fluffy. But of course, you know, they had them in stock for a razor. So we just looked up Super ATV Super ATV had adapters that would go from Fluffy's lug pattern to the Razor lug pattern. They were, I think, they weren't even that, that expensive. So I just ordered up some uh, some uh, adapters and had the wheels and had the adapters. I think I even probably had them overnight, to be honest with you, because I'm stupid like that. Um, so I could bolt, put those wheels on Fluffy. And honestly, it spaced them out really nice. It, it actually helps the suspension work that much better uh, with that little bit more leverage to it. Um, so the only thing about it is, you know, obviously, you know, if I want to put stock wheels back on it, I have to pull all this crap off, which, nah, I don't ever, I don't know that I've ever put stock wheels back on it. So I don't really care about any of that. Um, but uh, somewhere along the lines, I broke a stud 
I, I don't really know how or when it happened, but I did buy a spare set of adapters um, a month or so after I got the thing all done and built. I went ahead and I bought a spare set of adapters for it. So uh, instead of trying to pop the stud out, I'm just going to take the whole adapter off, throw this one in a box. I'll keep it for the studs, for the spares, and I'll pop, the, pop my back up on there. And then this will be done dealio. We can put the wheel back on. I got to order a lug nut for it because these stupid wheels do take a special lug nut. So I'll have to try to get online and see if I can find a lug nut that'll, that'll work. Uh, so swap this guy out that way when I do get the lug nut in at least all I gotta do is zip him on there and be ready to go I will say this, it is worth noting that um, Fluffy has a smaller lug pattern, but a much larger stud, you know, for whatever that's worth. <clears throat> Give us Yamaha owners something to beat our chest about. You know, running an eyeball wheel can be a pain in the butt. Now, of course, you know, at the time when I bought this, nobody was running 30 inch tires on a side by side. I was the first one in the area, um, which was kind of why I did it, obviously. And uh, they were super cool now. I mean, hell, people run 38s on them now, ain't no big deal. But um, because it is a 16 inch uh, wheel and 30 inch tire, and it was a razor wheel, uh, I did go ahead, I, I did buy a matching. Uh, uh, wheel and a spare tire uh, in the event that you know anything ever went wrong if I'm on the trail or something I've got what I need it, you know maybe not in the in the vehicle with me but at the very least I've got it at the truck so I can get this dude off the trail if I need to or fix it and keep riding or you know whatever whatever should come along now I will say one thing about these wheels I still to this day I love how they look. Now I let a buddy of mine borrow Fluffy one time and he tore up more shit on Fluffy and one trail ride that he went on than I have in the entire time I've owned it. But he used to have these really cool little chrome uh, bolt head looking deals that uh, went, uh, went all the way around the wheel. You know, he broke almost all of those off this wheel, but ooh, this acts like it don't want to start. These, the holes for these lug nuts are super small. They fit extra, extra, extra tight. Let me see if I can run this on real quick, make sure it is good. Oh yeah. Yeah, you gotta have them lined up like perfect to get the damn thing to start and then kind of center the wheel up once you, uh, once you get up on there. Once you get like the first one kind of centered up, the rest of them go pretty good, but it is kind of a pain in the butt. There we go. Nailed it first try that time. Well, so for those of you laughing because I've actually been four-wheeling this thing on three lug nuts, this thing has been on three lug nuts a lot longer than it had four lug nuts. <laughs> no, it's not something I'm particularly proud of, but it got it done, so. And I don't get to four-wheel a whole lot these days. Every, <clears throat> more than anything, it's just, it's a, it's a workhorse. And a good one it is. Her back loose. All right. That's got that. Let's move to the front. Let's put a winch on. Well, obviously, uh, that ain't gonna be in this episode. 
um, because this video is long. I don't think I've put out a video this long before, like 45 minutes. Um, but uh, there was a whole lot of stuff to cover. I wanted to fit in in this one. And, you know, the next one, it'll probably be long too. But uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, something a little bit different. I haven't messed with Fluffy in quite a while. And, uh, you know, um, I'll throw a little side-by-side -side content on the channel just to kind of let you guys know what I'm up to. Um, always got plenty of crap to work on around here, I assure you. Uh, if you've hung in here this long, thank you so much for watching until the end. Uh, you probably have already done it, but if you haven't, click the subscribe. Click the bell so you get notified for any content that I put out, whether it be a, you know, a, a, a bat review or some uh, review of some sports apparel or tool or um, woodworking or, you know, war machine or fluffy or, you know, if, uh, if, there's, if I got something around here you'd like to see get worked on, throw it in the comments. If you got a question, comment, anything, throw it down there. I love interacting with everybody. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.